What's up guys, Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and it has finally arrived. El Chete from Topps Knives. We're gonna to talk through all the details and the specifications on this knife. We'll talk about the sheath system, but let's get out there and chop some stuff, shall we? All right, look at this work that this guy did here. And we'll talk about the ergonomics and how it feels and everything in a second, but just want to give you a sense of what the, uh, what the El Chete did. And this wood right here, I mean, this is like, when you have wood that's dyed and totally dried out and it's like semi, you know, it's, a, it's too extreme to say it's petrified, but it's like moving in that direction. And this thing uh, definitely did the job. I'll take a look at the, uh, the edge here. No rolls, no chips, no nothing. I was a little concerned when I heard, you know, by hitting it how hard the wood was, but this thing is it's looking good. Without a lot of work, we are probably a quarter of the way, maybe a third of the way through this thing, thanks to the El Chete. All right, so as probably you and I would expect, I don't think it's gonna have any problem with this, uh, you know, this tiny wood. If you were around camp, getting some uh, pieces of firewood ready. Maybe you've got a packable, um, one of those tiny little camp stoves that burns wood and you need some small pieces of wood. It's gonna work fine for all these, no problem. Doing work around camp. This one's slightly bigger. This is up to probably maybe around thumb size here, but no problem. Then we've got here a piece of pine that's very dried out. We're talking probably an inch and a half across. And we'll, uh, we'll give this a shot. Yeah, so snap the end, end of it, but still probably cut through 75%. Yeah, so you got not just the cutting power, but just the force and the weight. That was just a straight cut right through. This is probably the widest portion here. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. Definitely doing work. El Chete. We're gonna process some bigger wood now. I uh, cut into it a couple times just to make sure it was actually stable here cutting. But you know, this is, it's probably two and a half, three inches across. And if we were prepping some firewood, you know, we're just basically testing out how does El Chete work in that process. It definitely sticks. There we go. So at this point, some people might chop all the way through, but for me, I would just break this off and get El Chete safely out of the way here. See if we can just break this with my weight. Yep. So there's one piece of firewood. Just two swings there. We're gonna do some batoning here, and just a reminder to be careful, it's a big blade, so if it swings free, it's gonna come this way, 
you don't want to take it in the leg, so just uh, set yourself up so you're safe. Yeah, no problem. All right, who knows, you may be in a situation where you need to get some fine work done with the Alchete, so I'm gonna put my, uh, kind of a finger and a half in the choil here, see what we can do. Yep. And I will say, Tops did a great job bringing this, sending this to me nice and sharp. Well, the camera cut out on me a little bit there because the sun was going in and out of the clouds, but here's what I was able to do with the El Chete. Definitely got that detail work done nicely. Now I realize what I'm about to say might be controversial, but if you see that oak tree right there, it's about 75 feet tall over at the base of the hill. And I feel like if we're gonna really put the El Chete through the paces, that we're gonna have to, <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm not gonna cut down some massive live oak, but what I can tell you is that uh, so far, this thing has done a very nice job in all the cutting tasks uh, I've challenged it to. You saw because it is, you know, a machete style cutting tool as opposed to an axe, when you really swing and chop in, it can get stuck in the wood. Um, but so far, other than that kind of sticking factor there, this thing is doing a beast of a job on a lot of things. Let's take a look at the sheath system here. You can see that I went with the dangler option. They also do offer the sheath with a standard clip option, so you can have that right up a little bit higher. I want a little bit more movement in mind, so that's why I went with the dangler option. It is Kydex, and you have one of the pull the dot systems, so this is not going to pull out or down, but if you pull up on the strap here, on the snap, that'll come out, that'll, that'll loosen up, and then you can actually take the El Chete out. Now you do have a um, an opening on the top, which makes it easier to slide it in and take it out like so, right? So you got that movement there. One thing I found um, is that you can, if you really pull hard and lock this down, you can actually draw it out this way, but it just takes a lot of effort. One thing that is cool um, is that you can slide it in like this. It'll click just slightly in and then you gotta push down and it'll lock in and now it's nice and secure. I don't have any concerns about this thing, you know, falling out or popping out as I'm walking around. It does have movement, obviously. That was intentional with the dangler system. Uh, and again, so you're going to pull up towards you, or you know, if you have it like this, you're basically pulling away. And then when you snap it down, you have to kind of get that top edge in and then fold it over. So top edge down, and then you'll see it snap into place. So that's what your sheath system looks like. I'll give you a close-up on it. Here's a close-up look at the sheath, and you can see once again the top is open there. Got a bunch of lashing points there if you want to attach it to, you know, a uh, gear or you can run um, paracord around it and then uh, tie that around your legs. So just a little bit more secure. There's a look at your dangler system. There are snaps there as well. So if you don't want to take your belt off and then put it on and put your belt back on, uh, what you can do is uh, just unsnap that and then re-snap it once it's around the loop of your belt. There's a look at the uh, securing snap and again pulling up like this. And then when you want to put it back on, kind of get that top lip over. A little hard to do up high like this. And then push down, and that'll click into place. Let's look at the sheath. So let me just run through some of the specs here, and then we're going to head up to the studio to wrap up this review. I'll give you some thoughts on the El Chete. So 17 and a half inches from end to end, 12.5 for your blade. Uh, it is canvas micarta. You do have kind of, it's kind of like an, an OD leaning toward brown. And then you've got it sandwiched. You got some red in there. You've got some black. Then obviously it's a full tang, full tang uh, knife or machete, whatever you want to call it. Um, it is uh, Rockwell hardness of 56 to 58. 
and it does have this acid rain wash and so they know on their website that every single El, Chet El Chete that goes out is going to have a slightly different finish because that's the nature of this acid rain wash that they uh, that they put on it. Um, yeah, I mean, again, just cool looking. Nice long sweeping blade there. Your weight is 29.5 ounces, so just under two pounds. And um, I mean, you definitely feel the weight of this thing when you're swinging it and when you're carrying it. But under two pounds for something this big is, I think that's that's quite good. You know, when I first picked it up or I first saw it, I should say, um, I don't know if it was at Shot Show or at Blade Show last year, but I was like, man, that thing is big. And then you pick it up, you're like, oh no, it feels feels pretty manageable. Your actual cutting edge for the El Chete is 11.38 inches, and it is quarter of an inch thick. So those are some of the details on this. Your price point right now, at the time of this video, is around $240 for the El Chete. So uh, with all that said, with having you seen uh, the, the machete in use, the specs I just gave to you, and also have already we've already talked about the sheath system a bit, like I said, we're gonna head up to the studio now and give you some final thoughts, what we think about the El Chete. Up here in the studio now, and let's talk about some uses for the El Chete. So first off, I'm gonna say uh, a camp tool, absolutely. So because it is around two pounds, uh, you know, a lot of people are gonna say, ah, oh, it's too heavy for me to go backpacking with or hiking a long distance with. But if you're hiking a mile into camp, if you're doing car camping, uh, definitely having this in camp could offer a lot of opportunities to do chopping, cutting, wood prep, um, I mean, it's just a, obviously a very hefty tool. Uh, again, I think because of that weight, there's going to be people who just say, no way, I can't carry that back into, you know, the back country. Or they're going to say, well, I'm going to choose an axe instead of this or a hatchet because um, this definitely leans toward, you know, a machete style uh, item. Now, that said, what my opinion on this is like, it's kind of in between that standard machete and moving to an axe. It's got the weight and the heft to do some serious chopping like an axe does. Um, but because it's still thin, as you saw earlier, it's going to really dig into wood when you're doing that chopping. So with an axe, you're going to have, that can happen. Certainly your, your, the, uh, head of your axe can get stuck in wood when you're cutting it. But with this, it's going to be more likely, but not nearly as likely with a standard machete. And obviously this thing with being a quarter inch thick, you're not going to have flex with this like you would with your standard machete. And I'm actually rolling some other, uh, some other chopping tools to, uh, kind of compare to this in a, uh, in a moment or two. Couple things I want to note here. I've used this on camera and off camera as well. I've really put this thing through the paces and no chips, no rolls, no issues. The heat treat that Tops does, I find just in general, is uh, is very good. You see some dark spots there. That's just because I haven't cleaned it off well, but no issues whatsoever with the blade. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the handle. So this is how my hand naturally falls with this. What I will tell you is that it is wider than most of the Tops knives I have. I also have the um, Silent Hero here. And that one I just find is is from medium down leaning toward thin. This one for me is the right size. When I hold it, I'm like, yes, I've got good control of it. When I really grab this thing, because of that, this big, uh, it's not a choil, I guess, necessarily, because it's not up on the blade, but this big finger guard, man, my hand just locks in right like this. So as I'm swinging, I feel like I have excellent control. Throw a lanyard on there, even better. One thing I do think is, I guess it's a little odd to me, is this back here. So you can get your hand in here, and maybe it's just me because I have large size hands, but to get it in and keep it in front of this little lip here, I'm kind of, you can see my fingers are turning red because I have to really kind of squeeze it to get it in there. If they made this handle just a little bit longer, you know, and my hand could fall like that and then the metal was down here, this thing would be off the charts for me as far as a big hefty chopping tool. So um, I, don't, I didn't mind using it like this. I didn't mind holding it like this to do some of that detail work. Um, I did note before that I can't get two fingers in here if I'm doing that detail work. It's kind of like a finger and a half. But for the chopping, my hand naturally falls this way. I, what I would like to see on the handle is a little, just a tiny bit more of a handle here sticking out to lock my finger in even better. And then I'd like to see this just a little bit, a little bit longer. And again, that's me, large size hands. So if you have medium size hands, maybe that's not an issue. Um, but that's, that is one change I'd like to see. They do put a bow drill divot in there. I mean, this thing is so front heavy that to hold this thing, even with the sheath on, and to lock it in to do a bow drill, it's, it's nice to have the option, but I wouldn't bank on this thing being your, your best option as far as a, uh, you know, a, for, for the bow drill divot and to have that as your handhold. I would, I would look to use something else before I looked to use this thing. Let's look at these four chopping tools, the El Chete, obviously, and then we have the Severance from Three Dog Knife out in Alaska. Up here we have uh, the Bushcraft Machete from Ontario Knife, and then the Machete .230, I think people just call it the 230, 
uh, that's also from Tops. So your price point, 240. This one starts at 375. You're probably gonna be pay paying more around you know 450 and up for this one. This one's gonna be in the hundred dollar range, and then this one up here is running about 175, and then down from there a little bit. So you know price point. You've got as far as machete, real true machetes with flex like a machete. These two are gonna definitely function in that way more. These are much more what I would call choppers. That being said, your price point is, you know, say $475, I've seen on their website mostly around there, and down to $240. So you're you're definitely this is LMAX steel, this is $1095, some similarities as far as the you know Kydex sheath and such. But you know, if you're if you're thinking about chopping options and you're like, I want something from Tops and I want a machete, then this could be a good option to check out. If you're saying, no, I want something that's really just a hefty chopper. This is, this is definitely something I would recommend. So I just wanted to lay these out. You know, if you're looking for choppers, uh, this is kind of what you're, the style you're going to be looking for. If you're looking for more of a machete, these guys up top. And once again, uh, this thing has performed just great. And it just has power, 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 chopping power. Absolutely from, the, from this very nice tool from Tops Knives. Final thoughts here. Um, will I bring this out to the woods? Will I use it out in the woods? Absolutely. I like it enough that I'm actually be using it this upcoming weekend um, as a, a significant chopping tool in some of the work I'll be doing out in the woods. If I had to rate knives from, you know, terrible on one end to amazing on the other end, if average is here and then you have good and then great and then excellent and maybe amazing, I'd put this above good, leaning toward great. If there was another, I don't know, half inch or maybe an inch, that's probably a little bit too much, but a little bit more length on this handle, I would easily put it in the great category for me because I don't mind the weight. I think it does a great job, good steel. I like the just overall look of it, the concept from it. It's just a little bit too small for me, a little bit more handle there. Would have put it easily into that great category. Um, right now it's very good, I would say, leaning toward great, but I just can't push it over the top there because of that handle being a little bit too small for me. Um, if you're looking for something that's unique, cool looking, gonna definitely be outside the box from your standard chopping tool, your standard machete, this is definitely one you wanna check out from Tops Knives. The El Chete, this, this is, is gonna run you around 240, and um, you're gonna have a, a long-term investment that's gonna, I think it's just gonna do a great job at a lot of those outdoor heavy chopping tasks. So thanks as always for checking out the videos here on YouTube. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids if you haven't done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check us out on Instagram and Tumblr as well. More videos coming soon. Take care.